Welcome to part 5 of the Parthia campaign abridge, where last time we fought a couple of defenses against Scythia. One went badly, and one went well, ended up losing a territory. We gained a territory from the Seleucids Antioch, but we're now poised to lose it again. Mainly because of Egypt, we're now at war with these guys, and they're hanging around near Seleucia, also near one of my armies, so we're going to have to do something about that. I tried to get out of the Seleucid war, I really wanted to leave them alone for a bit, or have them leave me alone specifically, but all of the bribes and such I was trying to get in here did not make a difference, it was always very demanding to go for a ceasefire. So the war continues, and for the Egyptian war, well things are going to get started, we're not going to do anything special here, I'm going to grab my army and walk at theirs and see what happens. Their army is pretty much all light infantry with a few light cav as well. They're all units that, in the right situation, would destroy us, but in a different situation, we will destroy them. We're both counters to each other situationally. So all we need to do is play this right, not go too near those ranged units or spears, and try to kill them at a distance really, and occasionally run into the ranged units when needs be. We also need to take care of the light cav, and that was the thing I was doing first and foremost, because they're the main risk to our horse archers. On the left we're just shooting them, on the right I'm shooting them and sending in the cataphracts to just engage them from the front because that will easily rout them. I'm also going to send the generals around the back of the enemy army, not only to pursue the enemy's cav but to just be there ready for action later. It's going to be one of these icon battles where we can't really tell what's going on, I'm just moving the icons about and hoping that down on the ground things are going well. Looks like it's going well on the right flank, we've driven away a couple of enemy units, we've got some exposed peltas there for us to run into just in front of their army, and behind their army we've routed some cav, need to get our cav out of the back of the enemy formation, micro will be an issue in a battle like this as we'll see. One thing that helps us out is the fact that the Egyptian generic spear unit, the Nubian spears and the desert spears, are both phalanxes technically, that means they walk really slowly, so it's relatively easy to not be in melee with them, we're still accidentally getting caught. But broadly speaking, we can always run away, the spears won't be a threat. Annoyingly, a unit I was pursuing there came back from routing, so our horse archers will have to fight the enemy's light cav. A bad matchup, but they're already weakened, so we can get away with that. Somewhere, their captain among the cav routes and then gets killed. Now, combined with the fact it's a night battle, these enemy units will be permanently on low morale. This should make things easy. But actually, there's a twist. While we haven't killed most of their stuff yet, they start withdrawing. It's always so good when this happens. Not because it's good for us tactically or anything, but it just reminds me of the fact the AI knows to do this. Yes, they absolutely should try to escape this battle, they're all going to die. There's really nothing to lose by just sprinting for the edge of the map at this stage. Normally in Total War the AI would never consider doing this, but right here, I'm proud of them. So we can't go in really aggressively like with a rout, because they'll still fight you if you make contact, they're not actually routed. However, They'll always have their backs to us as they're moving away, so just walking behind them with the horse archers and raining arrows will be quite effective. And they are quite low morale units in a low morale situation, so realistically if we do make melee contact they might just rout. I put my cataphracts in front of their line of escape, those thingers go right down. And as you can see this ball of horse archers is following up from behind, grabbing billions of kills. It got to the point when I thought well we might as well just melee charge everything because their army losses will have built up by now, they'll just rout if anything happens to them. And as mentioned a couple of times, being in melee is usually just the condition for routing because it makes all of your morale effects kind of apply properly. And that was that. We lost something like 100 troops out of our 2,000, they lost like 2,500 troops. We've absolutely crushed that first army. That's going to even things up a bit. But we still have to keep going, there's another army nearby, led by their faction leader. I wanted to go and attack them right now, but I actually ran out of movement points and ended up stuck next to them. However, I could grab some hillmen from Seleucia nearby and run them out to start a fight, and now our horse archer blob will come in as reinforcements, so we can arrange roughly the same battle as the one we just saw. This time they have two generals though, that will make it harder to rout everything, 
and the generals will have heavy chariots. Plus, it won't be a night battle, so overall this is a slightly more difficult version of what we just did. Again, I'll mainly maraud around on the enemy's flanks with my horse archers and see what we can do, and have our block of infantry kind of just sit around in the center. We've got no micro for them, so we're not really going to give them any orders. A nice cheeky charge there to take out some skirmishers and just barely get away before we run into the front of those pikes, or the hoplite spears, really. Here's another cheeky move with our generals taking out the enemy right in the midst of their formation. I was worried about their chariots. I had this vague memory in my head that chariots are either good against cavalry or weak against cavalry, and I couldn't remember which one it was. It might actually be neither. I think they're just weak against fighting while they're standing still, and maybe that's easier to achieve with cav or something. I did actually get one of my horse arch units stuck into melee with some spears there, and then didn't get them out before they routed, so that's unfortunate but bound to happen in this kind of situation, especially with me in control, or not in control as it were. Well, things are going well enough, most of the enemy units aren't really doing anything that suits us. Looks like they're starting to approach my main position here. I'm going to get my horse archers to try and shoot at their archers, because if they just sit back and fire at my main block, that could be trouble. We get a general killed message, I immediately looked to my main commander and I was like, no way, how did he die? then realized it was talking about the commander of the hill men who started the battle, who were coming in from behind, they just got killed with a straight up cav charge. At least the cav that did it, then have to face down my general's bodyguards, and they're going to lose that fight. So it worked out in the end, the hillmen proved disappointing though. Some good news comes in, because while I was microing around at the back, the main fight in the background of this shot, causes the enemy king to die. Their chariots went in to fight my eastern spears by the looks of things and got somewhat killed. That's going to help out. Now, not only will it be easy to rout the enemy, but again we're going to see the AI consider leaving. Some of the units have the white flag over them. That means they're voluntarily withdrawing. It's a red flag when they're routing. As they started to move towards the corner of the map, we can just hound them on the way out. Our army is ideal for punishing the AI for withdrawing. So while it is nice that they thought to even try and withdraw, in these particular circumstances, we can inflict big damage by trotting along behind them and just attacking with bows or running into them with cav. We kill most of them on the way out, and the battle ends up being a decent enough fight. Not as good as the last one, a bit more chaotic, and a couple of units did take some major damage. Overall though, that this big Egyptian force of some 5,000 troops overall out the window. Here's some more nice news. The force that was defending near Cotes has walked off somewhere. So my army built specifically to retake the city is now overkill. It's easily going to be able to get in there and take it. Just need to go through the siege process. My attempts to break out of the top right corner are going to continue. We don't have to go very far to take the next settlement and that will advance the front line but there are various enemy units around in that area, so it's a little bit perilous. We don't have that much stuff and it's hard for us to get more stuff, but with mercenaries, we can even that balance a little bit. Now we need to complete the switcheroo we started in the previous part, as my second main army, Army 2 in my head, comes back around towards Hatra. There they can link up with a bunch of other troops and soon we'll have a substantial army there and we've avoided any shenanigans with the Seleucids taking Hatra back. With the Egyptians gone, it's time for our main army, army number one, to go for it. That is to say, we're going to walk towards Egypt. Here's the first bit of Egypt to conquer, Palmyra. It's poorly defended, just need a few turns to get there, and then we'll set up a nice easy siege. We are though going to make a concession to Egypt right now, as they are attacking Antioch, which we're only holding somehow. It would have rebelled, but I'm guessing while it's under siege it can't rebel. So we still had it, and now we don't have it. The Egyptians actually exterminate the populace here, so that's a shame. If we take it back it will now be less valuable to us. At least it's also less valuable to them in this state. By the next turn we've got some good news up at the top right because the enemies that were in this area just aren't there anymore. Well, I can't see them, I should say. They're almost certainly just off to the left somewhere. We're going to ignore the possibility that they can go and take our old settlement and instead focus on taking their settlement. They probably can't relieve that siege in one turn, meaning we'll be able to sneak in. Looks like the road to Palmyra, well, not a road to Palmyra as it were, is still clear. We need to get there and build the roads for ourselves to make our empire look a bit nicer. And here we can start forming our secondary main army. 
We don't actually need to go to Hatra because there's no point, we're going to be going to the left, so might as well just go down to the road and link up with the troops from the town. We can leave only some peasants behind and public order's good, so now we've got a nice beefy force. I'm going to move them towards that bridge and then just wait to see what happens. There are two more stacks of Egyptian troops nearby and the Seleucids might come over and attack us, but with the Egyptians in between now, that seems less likely. Although, of course, they can still come through the mountains like they did before. After starting the siege at Palmyra, I immediately realized I could have put this spy inside to try and take it this turn. I think I could still lift the siege, put the spy in, and then try to attack again. But I didn't, so never mind. Doesn't matter too much in this case. We are, though, going to make our attack up at the top right. Not much happened, still no sign of the enemy's units. We just have to make this easy assault. I think the balance bar here is being generous to the enemy. They've got basically nothing in comparison to us. It might be because their general's bodyguard is a heavy cavalry unit and that's technically a powerful thing. In this circumstance though, he's not going to have much opportunity to maraud around. To start off, our horse archer blob moves over to the walls of their camp. A few arrows should deal with this dog's unit. I'm not sure, but I guess when you kill a dog handler, all of the associated dogs will also just die. You don't see the dogs like running off on their own after the handlers die. Or maybe we just happen to always kill the dogs and the handlers with this storm of arrows. Whatever the case, we don't need to worry much about that unit. Looks like our ram is actually being hit by fire arrows from one of their towers. Fortunately, they're nowhere near effective enough to do anything, so we are going to open up the gate and get in. This camp is nice and easy to attack with horse archers because there's this big ring around the capture point which we can just fill with the horse archers and start attacking from multiple directions. Once I fire some arrows at the capture point, their general is activated and starts coming towards me. I'm going to immediately try and move my horse archers to be more behind my one anti-cav unit, our mercenary hoplites. And fortunately, they do take the brunt of the enemy's cav attack. They should have all sorts of bonuses against Cav and just generally be good in this situation. So this is perfect, plus arrows are still raining down. That's fine. Need to soften up that axe unit that's sitting around. Well, we've got plenty of units sitting around on our side to do that, and they'll have no hope of catching us in melee unless pathfinding bugs out and such. Once I've softened the enemy enough, I just went in with the generals to conclude this fight. The generals do the job. They're a nice unit to use because their troops regenerate for free automatically. So while it's a little bit risky, it's usually a good idea to have the generals go on in and do these negligible little fights where they probably won't die, but you might take a few casualties. That's the end of the fight. Didn't lose that much stuff, and we've taken a new frontline position. So my big hope is that any future attacks will come to here instead of the old place, meaning the front line will just be neater. We've got more territory behind our front line, I should say. The enemy is still sort of choke pointed through this area. Not really, of course, and that's the main weakness to this plan. The real advantage, though, of taking this place is that we now have a single continuous territory. I think, in reality, we have territory on the other side of the Caspian Sea off the map, so we would already have one. But now it's on this side of the Caspian, so that looks a little bit better. Should help out with our trade routes as well. It might actually grow our economy better to be set up like this. Taking Cotes would make things even better, and we can do that right now. It's a very similar battle to the one we just saw, only this settlement is more developed, so it's going to be more annoying to attack. But like before, we begin by firing at a unit of dogs defending the gate, exactly the same as before, and it goes just as well they die off and run away. We get inside and then things get a little bit more inconvenient because we've got all these narrow streets to move down and you can see those blue lines on the ground. My horse archers, when they have ranged attack orders on the enemy, the waypoint system that's trying to take them to somewhere in range of the enemy is actually taking them to stand on top of the enemy. This is that thing I mentioned before where your units try to move to a waypoint near their destination before moving to that destination, and that can cause all kinds of weird things to happen. I'm guessing the base game was like this, but in the base game you couldn't see the lines, so it wasn't as obvious they were making these weird moves. But here, it's all quite bad. Not too bad actually, because we're only facing down enemy horse archers, so being trapped into melee with them isn't a disaster. There are some other regular cav going in there though, this could be more dangerous. I wasn't really trying to get out of this fight, I just thought I'll pile on in and win it if we can with sheer mass, 
We don't need to fight most of it though, because the battle ends we can just skip those barbarian cav that probably saved a fair few lives. After the fight we can see there are still some enemies nearby. I should also add by the way that I've increased the UI scale, you might have noticed that the UI is bigger than before, this is the maximum UI size you can have. It just makes everything bigger, the objective was to try and make the unit cards bigger and just some of the stuff to read a bit bigger. It does look better like this, I think. I would like to see the elements in the corners be slightly smaller while the stuff in the middle was slightly bigger and then have the build menus and recruit menus be large semi full screen menus that sort of thing but it's certainly a bit easier to use like this so that's something you can turn that up in the options menu there were lots of rumors going around in the comment section that you could re-enable the old ui through the options menu well i still don't think you can someone insisted it was possible but i have yet to find any such option now back up at the top right, the enemy are behind my new front line, so yes, that didn't really work out. We're going to have to go back again now. We'll leave quite a few things in our newly captured location because of public order being very bad. I wanted to move quite a lot away, but I'm going to leave like half of the army here and then rely on mercenaries as we leave as well. We are going to struggle with public order in this area, not only because it's far from the capital, but because we have cultural penalties as well. We could like destroy all of the buildings in town and remake them. This would get rid of the culture penalty issues, but it would also be quite expensive and we're not really rolling in cash right now. So we're just kind of tolerating it. Eventually though, I form up the army in between my two settlements and we'll come back to that another time. Now down at Palmyra, we've got another easy settlement assault to make not very much on the inside and we've got millions of horse archers so we already know what's going to happen here we'll just take a very brief look at it since i filmed it and i've got to use the footage for something here are some guys wandering around near the wall getting hit by arrows they can't do anything more than wander or walk because they're trying to stay together in phalanx formation probably a bad idea in fact fighting at all is probably a bad idea but while the AI can withdraw from field battles, you can't do it from a settlement battle and there's no surrendering mechanic, nothing to represent that real life thing, which is how these guys would get out of this situation in real life. I did notice that there seems to be an issue with this street over here. I thought that street would be passable because the mouse usually changes when you mouse over something that's impassable, but all of our guys heading towards the middle are taking the long way around. Inconvenient just means we've got a smaller front against the enemy. But basically this battle just comes down to this, my general's bodyguards absolutely hacking their way through the enemy. You can see the mass mechanic in action here, where we're actually pushing them back even when we're not killing them, which is pretty cool. I would like to see that put back into Total War at some point. Suffice to say we take the settlement and we lost like 10 guys or something, it was super good. Now I want to leave as soon as possible, so I'm going to test to see how little I can leave in the town while still moving out. While I was doing this though, I got a little bit distracted. You can see me here moving the mouse around looking for something because the music changed. I don't think I've ever heard this music before. It's probably because I've never played as Egypt in the original. I'm guessing this is just like some Egyptian background music and now that I've taken one of their towns or got a bit closer to Egypt, it started playing it for whatever reason. But it threw me off because I thought like a cutscene was playing or something in a window somewhere. Anyway, once we're back on track, we sort out the public order by leaving behind a few infantry units and we'll just carry on. My plan now is to go to the west towards Damascus because that's a nice spot for us to take. From there we can either support Antioch or go south towards more Egyptian stuff. You might also note a single Egyptian officer is walking off to the right into the desert. I thought nothing of this at the time, but in the next part we'll see some antics from that guy, actually. I strategically moved towards Damascus in such a way that the nearby big Egyptian army can't attack me during the end turn sequence. Not that it would be such a bad thing if they did, we'd probably still beat them, but I wanted to leave open the option of fighting them up here on that bridge with my main force. I was really hoping they would swarm me or something with all of those armies and we could just take them down. I also wanted to spy more on the Seleucids, but some Pontus troops have trapped my spy on the wrong side of the mountain, so we don't have that much intel over there. Annoyingly, by the next turn, the Egyptian army that I wanted to attack me has just walked off to the east down the river. I'm guessing they're going to cross somewhere else eventually. It's sort of unclear where they're going with that move. 
but we need to stop them now, otherwise things are going to get out of hand and they'll end up somewhere annoying for us. Leading to this battle, similar to the battles we saw at the start of the part, they've just got a massive stack of spears and a few chariots. So we'll do the exact same thing as before, sit around on their flanks, be as annoying as possible, and fight them as little as possible. And with so many slow units on the field, it's going to be very easy to not fight them. The only thing they can do is run their chariots into us. But their chariots are trying to stay behind and be the general. So that's fine. Now we wait to see how many kills we'll get. And the enemy formation will break up more and more as they try and get individual units to react to this and just move out in various directions, opening up some opportunities for some surrounds and pounds. Looks like at the back we've totally broken off that group and are gradually whittling them down. A few straggler units can be charged at to rout them pretty easily, like right there. And we'll just cut them down piece by piece with this method. Looks like I did get one horse archer unit trapped in melee. Ordered them out there, but they're still on skirmish mode. That means they won't go out. A unit on skirmish mode that's in melee will ignore orders. You have to turn it off first. Now they'll be able to move out. We actually saved a surprisingly large amount of that unit there. That could have gone way worse. One of my generals ends up in melee combat with their chariots. Pretty nasty, we actually lose most of that general's unit. Not the general himself, luckily enough. The arrival of another general kills the enemy general and all of the chariots, so all of a sudden, things are much better. We narrowly avoided something bad happening there. Instead, it was something good. Now, again, we see troops trying to withdraw off the field. That's just not going to work in this situation. We can pick up as many kills as we need on the way to the line. And we need, I presume, to kill 85% of the enemy. I think it is the same as the Medieval 2 rules. Someone probably told me in the comments somewhere. But that seems to be working. Here we are later. We've killed enough stuff by the looks of things. We did lose a little bit, but not very much. And many of my casualties were some Eastern Spears who ended up fighting with enemy Spears and getting annihilated. Because Eastern Spears don't have any stats, broadly speaking, that was all fine. Our army still in condition to turn back and focus on the enemy army at Antioch and Antioch itself, while the main force is now safe to take Damascus, leaving us in a nice position with momentum ready to continue our advance. So that is what we'll be doing in the next part, along with the ongoing campaign to make something of the Scythian front. I really wanted it to be a front we could ignore, but they're not going to stop attacking us. Luckily, with this Kote situation secured, we can start actually forming a third substantial army by linking up this group with the other group up top. So that's what I'll be doing next time on that front. Join me to see it in part 6.